Hello, good evening, and welcome to Heartland Healing. I am your host, Michael Brownstein, and it is our pleasure to bring this TV show to you every Monday evening from Cox Cable Channel 23 Studios here in Central Omaha. So I want to introduce someone who I count as a very close friend and also someone that I've known has been involved in this area of aromatherapy for quite some time. So let's welcome Cherie Lane to our program. Hi, Michael. <laughs> Would you like to start us off by I've, giving us a little history of it? Initially, all the ancient civilizations had a need for aromatherapy uh, as it was associated with magic, pleasure, healing, as well as a therapy. And the first usage of it was basically incense, which ties directly today because perfume, which is where most people get their modern day aromatherapy, is... Oh, so a modern version of aromatherapy would be called perfume, a huge which is, industry. Which means through smoke, which is where... Perfume, oh, the yeah, word perfume... Means through smoke. Means through smoke. Right. Oh, and it goes back oh, yeah, to when... Fume. Right, exactly. Oh, Which thank goes you. back to the ancient usage of incense. And all major civilizations used incense as a form of curing their prayers to heaven. And if they scented the smoke with uh, resins and, and plant essences, then they felt like they would have um, a much higher incidence of their supplications being favorably granted. What really uh, piqued my interest was the effect that women had in the history of the evolution of aromatherapy into modern day usage um, and the way women used it in ancient cultures. For instance, in the Orient, women did not scent their bodies. They scented their clothes with these um, apparatus they made out of wood and they hung their clothes over the wood and burned incense underneath them to scent their clothes. It wasn't until they met um, European women who did scent their bodies because they didn't bathe as often that they started scenting their bodies. Um, in India, in the Karma Sutra teachings, women would stand over, concubines would stand over um, scented wood burning so that it would perfume their body to make them more sensual for their masters. Mm -hmm. um, in Egypt, which was probably the most interesting um, area of study for aromatherapy, um, women had very, very, and, and most people know these women, uh, Cleopatra was sure. ingenious as far as using aromatherapy for uh, seduction and whatnot. But um, there was a female pharaoh who invented mascara by mixing coal with plant oils and putting it on her eyelashes, not to look pretty, but to protect her eyes from the sun. Mm. And thus we have mascara today. Cleopatra would bathe three times a day, a uh, cool, tepid, and warm bath, you know, according to the day's succession. And each time she would use a different oil to scent her bath. She also scented her hair. She makes plant oils with uh, uh, plant uh, powdered extracts to make makeup. But one of the most creative uses of um, aromatherapy was her use of, of scented oils to scent her sails. So when she went to visit Mark Antony and the wind would blow in through her sails, he would know she was coming by the smell of the air. But when we first started off the show, I asked you, hey, are you nervous? Just kidding, jokingly, because I knew you weren't. Uh, and you said, oh, no, I just you know, used a little lavender. Right. So that moves us, shifts us into therapeutic right. applications. It's all, it's all congruent. Okay. Because uh, aromatherapy is a holistic practice. Mm -hmm. you teach, the definition of aromatherapy is treating body, mind, and spirit, or balancing body, mind, and spirit with the use of essential oils. And when you think about the holistic person, if you're treating the spirit, if you're making them feel more attractive, if you're making them feel more confident and better about themselves with fragrance, that's going to come out on the outside. I know there are aromatherapists who concentrate more in the medical um, application of the oils. Mm -hmm. I concentrate my practice more with women and in treating their spirit and their disease within their spirit. Now, yeah. men have had their, their, their role in bringing aromatherapy to where it is today. For instance, um, René Maurice Cafassier was the father of modern aromatherapy, and he discovered that using lavender on burns could speed up the healing process, leaving less scarring, and take the sen it desensitizes your skin so that you don't feel the pain. Um, he spent the rest of his life um, building a whole series of uh, experiments on, on how aromatherapy heals and essential oils heal. Jean Valnet, who wrote The Practice of Aromatherapy, used aromatherapy to treat 
World War II, and World War II to treat wounded soldiers. Yeah, that I find that story remarkable. Yeah. Uh, this, I mean, folks were talking about a physician. He was an MD, right? right? Exactly. Talking about a physician in World War II. Not, we're not talking about you know in the 1400s or the 1700s. Just in World War II, that treated battlefield mm -hmm. wounds with aromatherapy mm -hmm. and documented it in, in his book. Tell us a little bit about that, if, if, you, if you know what um, he was the doing. The practice of aromatherapy is, base, is a basic Bible for all aromatherapists um, because it does have all the medical applications for um, many, many different plants and flowers and resins. Um, he used them mostly on the battlefield when you had to have, um, well, you know, they had the mass units, but um, for treating them to keep them from being infected, to help their healing processes, he treated them topically. Aroma Essential oils have many components in them that are very, very strong antibiotics, very strong antiviral, anti-yeast, anti-fungal, uh, anti-inflammatory. Um, they have properties that can actually anesthetize you, like violets, uh -huh. you know? Um, so he used them in that way to help with the pain, to help the healing process along faster, to keep the infection rate down until they can go to a hospital where they might need surgery and it seemed to help them recover faster mm -hmm. and they had less losses with the soldiers that he was able to use aromatherapy. And he then wrote this book called The Practice of Aromatherapy and it is something I refer to a lot even in treating the spirit because obviously if some people are experiencing disease in a malady form if you go back and find out what is associated with that particular what oil is associated with healing or balancing that particular symptom you can go back and figure out how it's going to help, what you can use to help the spirit as a synergetic blend to mm -hmm. help whatever problem they're having physically. Yeah, really what we're talking about is something that also is very common to aromatherapy or, or to alternative healing arts, and that's healing from the inside out right. rather than trying to address the external world and trying to kill something. We're actually supporting exactly. a healing environment so that the healing can happen naturally right. and empowering. It's a, it's, it's a a fairly mysterious, I mean, aromatherapy is one of the most mysterious. I mean, <coughs> if we think about it, we think in terms of like acupuncture stimulates the flow mm -hmm. of chi through the body using meridians and mm -hmm. so on. Aromatherapy is, is sort of almost mysterious. We don't quite, I mean, I don't really understand how, how it happens, how, how it heals. Do you have any idea on that? Um, well, yeah, it has to do with um, even in utero, when a fetus is being formed, the very beginning parts of the brain are the areas, it's in the limbic system, and it's the, within those systems is your olfactory and your memory centers. That's the very most primitive part of the brain. It's the first, first part of the brain to form. Actually, when a newborn is first coming into the world, he recognizes his mother not by sight, but by smell. Mm -hmm. And because it's the first one formed, it's most powerful. Um, the essences, when you say the first one, the first sense. The first sense, right. right. Okay. The essences can enter your body two ways. They can be topically, well, actually three. They can be topically applied through massage. They can be inhaled and actually some of them taken internally, orally. But, um, when you inhale an essence, it goes directly into your brain. Okay, and from your brain, it goes into your limbic system and usually what that does it's going to, if you've smelled that before it's going to bring up a memory which is another way they use this it's called um, oh what is it called psychoaroma psychoaromatherapy mm. and they're using it a lot now to unblock memories when you inhale it it mostly affects your emotions okay and your moods and your sexual functions when you apply it topically it tends to go right into the uh, muscles, the tissue, the large intestines, because the oil itself is, is fat soluble, so it mixes with the oils on your skin, it penetrates through the subdermal tissues in your body, and then starts affecting the major, oil, major organs of your body. The oils enter and leave your body within three to six hours in a healthy person, and 14 hours with an unhealthy or obese person. Mm -hmm. Now I know that, that you uh, do teach Mm -hmm. and, yes, and lecture around just around the state or around the Midwest? Um, I have done therapy. some lecturing in, in Minneapolis, but most of the lecturing I do is um, in the Midwest, and I do teach for the state of Nebraska. 
and most of my teaching is directed towards people in my everyday profession, which is cosmetology. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a wonderful tool for really uh, exposing mainstream America to the healing effects and the balancing effects of aromatherapy, because aromatherapy is now moving it. You can't buy a shampoo without it saying natural right. or organic or botanical. What the consumer must realize, though, is that natural and organic doesn't necessarily mean botanical and pure. Right. I used to like to use the words botanically based and pure. Um, organic can be anything that wants, well, you know what organic yeah, means. You know, that's, Cherie, that's a really good point uh, because, it, you know, this entire alternative healing thing has become such buzzwords. Oh, yeah. There's, there's aromatherapy this, aromatherapy that, and, and organic this or, or whatever. All these buzzwords and products that you can buy at the store the fact of the matter is, just because it says those words, doesn't mean that it's essential or exactly. doesn't mean that it's pure. And if you're going to go to the trouble, if you're going to go to the trouble of paying attention to that side of your life in a metaphysical or alternative healing way, if you're going to go to that trouble, don't just go halfway. Find out exactly, you know, if, if this is, you know, why, why not go the whole route and, and see, mm -hmm. well, if I'm going to use something that says aromatherapy, I want it to really be aromatherapy, right? You know, and, and therapeutic. Because it's not therapeutic if it's a synthetic, lead-based aroma. Mm -hmm. The only therapeutic value is in the pure essential oil. You can have something that smells like a rose. Doesn't necessarily mean it's rose. So Gertrude Stein was wrong when she said a rose is a rose <laughs> is a rose. 